you've got to build the house yourself. <laughs> So, you know, we can get lots of information from our charts. Don't get me wrong. I've been doing a lot of charts and, of course, you know, uh, attempting to help a lot of people for many years, thousands of charts. And you can certainly talk to people about, okay, you know, you've got Neptune transiting through your seventh house. And this is a time where there may be some illusions around partnership and relationship. And it would be very good for you to, you know, practice, you know, some very good communication and clear communication. You, you, you know, you could have Saturn transiting the 10th house and, you know, the, you tell the person this would be a very good time for you to, you know, really put yourself out there in business and, you know, get some work done and, you know, have some self-discipline and blah, 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 blah. So, so the, the chart. The progressions, the solar arc directions, the transits, these are all wonderful tools to give us insight into our soul intention for incarnating, for the cycles of rise and fall and new moon, full moon, quarter moon, you know, this, the, all the cycles. All evolution occurs through cycles. It's very helpful to know where you are in any given particular cycle. But, you know, whether for yourself or for your clients, when you're counseling, I really feel that it's helpful to have resources. And so today I would like to share with you some of the resources that I use personally in my life that have really, you know, that have resonated with me and my wife and our relationship and look at all the different uh, transits, relate them a little bit to the different planets. And so if you have a particular Venus-Pluto conjunction in your chart, right? You know, there, the, uh, there are Plutonian, I'm gonna try to share this, you know, in a uh, astrological reference material, right? You know, if you have Neptune square the sun, you may want to be looking into ba 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 or whatever. So. I'm going to try to do it a little bit, relate them to the planets, whether it's in your natal chart or you're going through a Neptune transit or a Uranus transit or your client is going through, then, you know, that's, that's fine too. It looks like the streaming is not working. So we'll just let that go. A little 12th house experience for us today. <laughs> okay. So, um, the way that I and what has brought me to this is just the understanding that we are approaching in 2020 a Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto conjunction in Capricorn. And this is the balsamic phase of Jupiter approaching Saturn and then the balsamic phase of Jupiter and Saturn approaching Pluto. And so we're in this balsamic phase and the balsamic phase is about disillusion. Things dissolve, things go away. The old forms, the old structures, the old beliefs, the old forms of security just kind of start to just, you know, the, it's like the floor falls out from underneath you. And so, you know, it's a time where a lot of people are experiencing disillusionment. They don't know where to go, what to do, what to hold on to, what to believe, who to believe. And there's just a lot of stress happening. And I would like to believe that the stress is going to um, let up with the beginning of the new cycle of Jupiter and Saturn, passing over Pluto, starting a new cycle, Jupiter and Saturn moving into Aquarius, and it would be like, la da da, it's like, yes, you know, we did it, we made it, this is great. However, I've done that too many times before. I did it with the Harmonic Convergence in 87. I did it with Y2K in 2000. I've done it with 2012. I mean, we, all, we have these times one after another after another. And all I can say is, I feel that it's going to get a lot darker before it gets light. And I say this because, number one, I really feel that, you know, Pluto is coming around to the natal Pluto of the United States. And uh, that is happening in February. 
July and December of 2022. So we may have this Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto conjunction in 2020, but that can also be the beginning of the end. <laughs> uh, we know that, you know, Dane Rudyard in the astrology of America's destiny, you know, and I believe Jeffrey also talked about that the United States is not going to remain, okay, you know, the superpower that it has always been. And I believe we can see some cracks happening as the deficit reaches over a trillion dollars and Uranus is moving through Taurus. I don't want to get into all the transits of the United States, but it is a world power and it does have a tremendous amount of impact on global environment, on global changes, on uh, universal you know, planetary politics, on currency values, uh, stock markets, and everything. So a trade war with China, et cetera, et cetera. These kinds of things you know, upset the equilibrium of the entire planet. I also think that this ending time period, I don't want to be too premature, but my feeling is, is that Trump is most probably going to get reelected again, uh, sad to say, but we are moving into a very ultra conservative period as people become more afraid. They will be seeking people that promise tighter restrictions, you know, more security, more armies, more guns, more da 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 And my feeling is that particularly, if we want to look at it astrologically, Pluto is also squaring Eris. Okay, that is all through 2021. Then we also have Neptune coming in to square the moon's nodes, or we could say the moon's nodes are going to be squaring Neptune, right? You know, uh, all again, all the way through 2021. So, you know, my feeling is, is that this is Atlantis all over again. <laughs> we have sociopaths in power, okay? You know, if it's not Trump, it's, uh, you know, uh, uh, Bolsonaro, right? And if it's not Bolsonaro, it's, you know, some other dictator or some other blah, 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 blah. It's it, things are as the patriarchy ends and finishes and closes. There are these last grasps of power. There's a lot of insecurity, stress and challenges coming. So what we need are resources. We need to maintain our physical, emotional, mental, spiritual balance and remain centered through all of this. If we are going to be teachers, if we are going to be healers, if we are going to build communities, you know, into the new paradigm, whatever we're going to do, just have children. I mean, maybe you don't really need to do anything out in the world, but just to maintain your own sanity. I will also say I see a few other things happening. And of course, a lot of this has to do with the age of Aquarius that, you know, technology Technology is definitely on the rise. It's not going to slow down. I don't believe we're going to stop 5G. Come on. <laughs> there are forces beyond our control happening here. Okay. And there are, you know, there is really a very powerful impact. Technology, we are building artificial intelligence. We are building machines that, you know, move faster, that make decisions faster than a human being. And this is putting increasing amounts of stress in every way, shape, and form on everyone. And of course, as stress increases, we know that Neptune and Pisces, the desire to escape, be it through suicide, drugs, alcohol, sex, relationships, work, books, Netflix, I don't care what it is, but the desire to just numb out, to step back and step away, becomes even more prevalent in the population. So my feeling is, is that as healers, as astrologers, as counselors, as teachers, we will be needing, okay, to bring in not only the wisdom of astrology, but also offer people techniques, offer people links, websites, you know, people that are offering workshops, that are doing online courses, that, you know, have, uh, 
you know, coping mechanisms is what I titled this whole thing. Yeah. So, you know, coping mechanisms are, you know, ways of dealing with, and I called it madness. I called it madness because, you know, when it comes to Lacan and psychotherapy, we have also the breakdown, the breakdown of, I don't know if I'm going to go into the whole Boromaic knot, but, you know, it, it has to do with the symbolic and the imaginary and uh, the real. And these three form a knot. And when one of them is missing, okay, or one of them is absent, that knot, be, you know, becomes undone. And these are aspects of the psyche. And when the knot becomes undone, there is what's called madness. And we are, you know, we are approaching more and more this realm of madness. I say that it has a tremendous amount to do with the lack, with the number of single mothers, with the Chiron moving through Aries and the, the wounded masculine, you know, somewhat disappearing out of the scene. A lot of children growing up with no symbolic Symbolic is that authority that invades, that breaks into the imaginary. And the mother-child relationship is in this cloud of the imaginary, beautiful, wonderful, anything is possible kind of world of awe and wonder. But without the symbolic bringing in, like Saturn is, we could say, the symbolic, whether it is, you know, a father or, you know, a healthy uh, you know, authority figure in the life that is not this lunar, emotional, connected, spiritual, intuitive, imagination, energy, but really comes in with time, space, boundaries, healthy boundaries to keep out, okay, the real from overwhelming, okay, the real is just the, you know, the forces beyond our control, Scorpio, Pluto, and the eighth house. And we've all, we all have these. And without the proper development of boundaries, maturity, time, right, perseverance, self-discipline, these types of, uh, you know, the, that symbolic Saturn energy, this is how people get overwhelmed and do things that they would not do in a, healthy, psycho, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical state. <laughs> you got that? Ow. So I've always tried to remain super positive and I always, I always revert back to the, the, uh, the, the Buddhist monks that the one monk got cancer and the other monks just said, now you have an opportunity to do your practice at an even deeper level. So us going into the birth canal or the tunnel or into the dark or whatever, this is an opportunity. We chose to incarnate at this time. And this is an opportunity for each one of us to evolve our faculties, our resources, our capacities, and our talents. Okay, in an ever deeper, wider, broadening way. So today, I want to give you what I, like I said, some things that have helped me along my way. Maybe they will help you along your way. Maybe you are far beyond me and you don't need any of this, but they may be just helpful to share with your clients or your patients or whoever uh, your students or whoever you are working with. Yeah, so I want to share my screen. Uh, and I'm, I've got these links. Uh, Linda has this whole set. Uh, she's going to post it afterwards. Um, some of the stuff I offer on my website. Um, I've got a little free tab. <laughs> I've got a Kundalini yoga tab with free Kundalini yoga uh, meditations and Kriyas, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, some things are available just, you know, uh, right here in our astrological circle and others are not. The very first one that I want to share with you, and I know, I mean, some of you could say, oh, my God, this is so consensus. 
<laughs> and yet, you know, we are sharing the planet, <laughs> you know, with these people. And it's not like, you know, the, uh, the whole uh, three quarters of the world's population in the consensus stage of uh, evolution uh, are, you know, don't have anything going on. My, the first site that I'm sharing here is Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> I never thought I would be sharing Johnson and Johnson, but I'm going to do it freaking anyway. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Uh, let me share because it's not just Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> okay. You know what it really is, is the seven minute workout. Now I will say, first of all, farther down the list, like I said, three uh, H O is a Kundalini yoga. Uh, website Yogi Bhajan and those most of those kriyas are 45 minutes to an hour I like to wake up and do my kundalini yoga every day but when I'm traveling when I'm in a hotel where I'm you know where I'm teaching that morning or blah, 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 I don't have 45 minutes to do a kriya <laughs> and then I like to do a meditation after the kriya it's even more than 45 minutes right so if it's not that, then I'm going to come along and I'm going to say, all right, you know, uh, this seven minute workout, I have downloaded it onto my phone and it is just fantastic. You know, you do some jumping jacks, you do some push ups, you do some step ups, you do some squats, you do some, you know, uh, all different kinds. It's just an all around wonderful experience. and. As your body, I mean, it's great now because, you know, uh, we're in Virgo with all this Virgo, but, you know, this is, you know, just, um, yeah, we've got to keep our physical bodies together. Oh, no, that's not the one I wanted. Where's my, I had another one that is, uh, gosh, where did I put it? Oh, I think I have to stop stop that share and share uh, my other, the five Tibetan rites. Now the five Tibetan rites take more like 15 minutes. Okay, but these are the five Tibetan rites of rejuvenation. The first one you spin around in a, in a circle. The second one is a leg lift. These are, and I've got the whole story here. This is by the Colonel who went over, you know, into the Himalayas and he met the yogis and they just do, you do these 20, you do 21 of these, 21 of these movements. That's the hardest one. Each one of them 20, you know, 21 times. You can work up to it. Okay, you do that 21 times. And, and that, you know, that is the five Tibetan rites. And there's the whole story. This I will offer in my free uh, tab on my website. And because it's just a PDF file, right? I'm going to keep going. So those are the three physical. Uh, oh no, no, those are the three physical uh, things that I want to share with you. And of course, beyond the. Okay, so if you've got 45 minutes, you can do the yoga. If you've got 15 minutes, you can do the Tibetan rites. If you've only got seven minutes, you can do the seven-minute workout. And then take a cold shower. Of course, the, the yogis, you know, it's best to start out with a cold shower every morning. It cleanses so, so very much, right? Okay, next, you know, the timeless secrets of health and rejuvenation. Okay, this is by Andreas Moritz. If you're not familiar with it, this book is absolutely amazing. I'm going to just go a little bit through the table of contents for you to give you an idea to see if you want to get it or not. But the hidden laws behind sickness, disease is unnatural. He talks about the four most common causes of disease. He gives a kidney flush, liver flush, colon flush, you know, it talks about kidney stones, where the diseases begin is mostly in the gut. So he goes into diet. He even gives you steps on how to quit smoking. Okay. I mean, he gives you, here he goes into the secrets of the lunar cycles. 
Okay, I mean, Pata Vita Kafa. I mean, the guy is just absolutely amazing. Guidelines for a daily routine and diet. Uh, yeah, it just, you know, it goes on and on. Pranayama, breathing meditations, different oils that you can use. Uh, you know, uh, this is just really an amazing book. Uh, there's different diets. There's just the apple juice, uh, you know, everything. I don't know. And you can see how many pages it is. The bone building power of Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I mean, the guy talks about everything. All right. I don't want to get too lost here. So this is, you know, this is where we can go with this. And I want to just work through this list with you. So this, I would say, is having to do with Mars. Okay. With the sixth house, of course, with Pluto, the life force, the chi energy, you know, the kundalini energy is, you know, very powerful, very important. Okay. And moving on from that, I'm going to stay with Pluto for a little while because one of the uh, next best sites after we do our exercises, we come out and we read uh, the mirror of intimacy. It's a daily meditation from the Center for Healthy Sex. Uh, this is located in Los Angeles. Uh, and, you know, she is just absolutely amazing. Okay. Um, let me just kind of, oh, what am I doing? Stop it. Stop it. This is, I, I have to move this with my, Alexandra comes through with not only her own, but uh, you can have them email you a, a morning meditation. And of course, this uh, healthy sexuality involves way more than physical sex. Okay, uh, as you can see, some of the titles on here have, you know, so much to do with, you know, working with lust, working with communication, working with uh, uh, all kinds of, you know, what is that? Security, empathy, right? I mean, everything going on here. And particularly, uh, she uh, works very much with addictions, which brings us to Neptune. And it brings us to this next fellow. He's actually, uh, you know, his, doggone it. Uh, he's actually on here. I don't know if I passed him up already. But uh, Dr. Troy, Dr. Troy actually expanded upon something that I learned uh, from Jeffrey uh, a long time ago. Is this him? No. But Jeffrey talks about Scorpio, Pluto, and the eighth house dealing with loss, betrayal, and abandonment. And here comes Troy Love expanding it to rejection and abuse. And then, you know, he takes it from there into compassion, you know, the, you know, the, how to work with it. I mean, this is just a fantastic, uh, yeah, it's like, I want the whole world to see this 35 minute YouTube because he goes on and on about more and more ways of working and, you know, coming into a, a powerful place right, of self-love, self-understanding, and more. So I'm going to give you the link for that particular video. Working with sex and love addiction, Pluto, Neptune, 8th house, 12th house, 5th house. I mean, you know, it goes on and on and on. But now just coming right up with addiction is a Dr. Gabor Mate. Uh, you know, he has done a tremendous amount of work and he understands, okay, the glandular system, okay, and the release of dopamine and oxytocin and, and what, you know, the, how the chemicals are related to, you know, depression or, you know, bipolar disorders or every, I mean, every which way, shape and form. He is, uh, he's got a number of books. I've only seen a number of his uh you know, a number of his uh, 
YouTube videos. Um, but uh, he, he offers a tremendous, tremendous amount. And while I am, you know, moving through Neptune here, of course, we want to look at Pisces. We want to look at the 12th house. We want to look at what? Forgiveness. The whole Pono Pono, right? Uh, I, this, I've got the website for this. It explains this, you know, please forgive me. I'm so sorry. I love you. Thank you. It's a very simple, simple, simple way. It's a way of saying to the universe that I am going to let go. 12th house, Pisces, balsamic phase of anything, <laughs> right? All right. So, you know, this just, you know, uh, continues to move on. While I'm on this, Neptune, Pisces, 12th house. Of course, there is the yoga, the meditation, the breath work, the pranayama. And of course, I share spiritvoyagemusic.com. It's a library of kundalini yoga music, and you can run these mantras in the background. Okay, you don't need to always be chanting them yourself, even though that helps, but just having them running in the background or falling asleep to these mantras, it's absolutely amazing. It is sound technology. Using sound technology to awaken and move and shift different centers, different synopses of your brain to help rewire you into a more happy, healthy, and holy person, right? So what else can I go on with here? What is this one? Sri Chin Moy. I was introduced to Sri Chin Moy because I went to one of his marathon races. He is now passed on to the other side, but he does talk so much just about running, running, <laughs> running, and the rhythm and the beat and how it's so good for your cardiovascular system, but it can also be a running meditation so that you are working on, you know, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual all simultaneously. This guy is fantastic. I absolutely love him, and I recommend his techniques. Next is Jai Dev and Simran. They are a couple of uh, uh, yogis and yoginis. They have a number of different online courses. They do workshops. Uh, it's all about anything from being a warrior to business school, okay, to Ayurvedic. Uh, I actually did, uh, uh, Lara and I did The Sweetest Love. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it's a great relationship course. And, you know, they talk about it, of course, from, you know, Yogi Bhajan's particular, uh, you know, perspective. And they offer a number of different retreats, like I say. I think they've got one going on now. There's a live stream. Anyway, you can just check them out and see that, like I say, they do a lot of live streaming also. Yeah. So I'm just blasting through these babies and while i'm on the sweetest love as we undergo individually a tremendous amount of stress a tremendous amount of pressure a tremendous amount of loss of what used to be secure stable and solid it affects our relationships and a deep loving relationship can be a great source of security, transformation, evolution. So I, you know, I work very strongly with Laura. We, you know, we do a whole number of different, you know, uh, workshops and things like this. And we read the book, Getting the Love You Want by Harville Hendricks. And his wife, I think they've been married like 50 years or something, right? <laughs> But one of the things that they do, uh, they, they work with Imago, and the, you, know, you can get a hold of counselors, you know, right through Imago. 
uh, but they have the technique of intentional dialogue. This is the guy that started it, okay? And when it comes to solving or working through issues that come up between you and your partner or partners, I don't know if, you know, whether it's, you know, polyamorous, gay, uh, you know, L LGBTQ, whatever, we all are in relationships and there's ways of working with partnership that are universal, you know, independent of who it is with. And so this is just, you know, very good medicine for, you know, everybody on every level. And I want to just move on here with what? Boom. John Wineland. John Wineland is, uh, he not only works with intimacy, he was trained uh, with David Data. Okay. Um, and, but he's expanded, of course, he's doing his own, you know, he does his own things. He's got a lot of different courses. Um, and he does workshops, he does online courses, uh, all kinds of energy going on around love, love and more love. And he not only does it with love, but he's also working with men. And, you know, I've, you know, been doing workshops for many years. And I have to say, I get 90% probably, you know, is women attending these workshops uh, you, you know you go to astrology conferences etc cetera, etc cetera. we have chiron moving through aries i really feel that the front line as the patriarchy falls the rise of the feminine and the me too movement and lilith energy and kali you know calling men okay on their stuff wanting them to come into integrity it's great to have some resources that you can direct your male clients to or that you can also uh you know your your female clients you know it can you know send their partner you know or their brother or their father <laughs> you know over to get some uh you know some men's uh leadership in, uh intensives work so he's just really he does a whole training and that's John Wineland, if you haven't heard of him. He's awesome. Another, uh, another fellow is Brian Reeves. Uh, he's, uh, he's really, I forget the name of his book. Maybe, maybe it's Born to Thrive, <laughs> okay? But uh, again, he's working with not, uh, he does work with men, but also with couples. He does relationships programs. He does coaching. And uh, he's, you know, there's just a lot of um, good medicine by both uh, John Wineland and Brian. I've got another uh, woman, Sabrina Lynn. Uh, Lara listens to her a lot. Rewilding for Women is her site. Uh, she's on the list also. Uh, she does a blog, puts out a tremendous amount of information, okay? Uh, for women, about women, about relationship, empowering. You know, this is just the time where we need all the tools, all the techniques, sometimes coaching, <laughs> you know, whatever comes along for you or whatever you, you know, you know, whatever you relate to. Yeah. And, you know, moving on along with that after, after these guys, okay, Harville and John Brown, I want to bring in Sabrina. And then, of course, you know, good old Christine Northrup. Actually, Christine is an astrologer. I don't know if you're familiar with her work. Um, you know, she's uh, she works. She's a doctor. She's a medical doctor. OK. And of course, she's done, uh, as you can see, uh, she's got some books. Uh, she's got, uh, you know, a number of online courses. Uh, she's got some great dietary things and working with hormones, women going through menopause. Uh, there's just like all kinds of really fantastic um, advice, help, support if for, you know, people going through. And it's great to have 
an astrologer who is also a medical doctor who has, you know is also you know a working with right uh, the hormonal changes and the physical body and it's just uh, yeah very good very good medicine right um, after uh, Christine I want to bring forward to to you of course you've probably heard of Elizabeth Kubler Ross and she came in with the stages of grief it's like I'm still I'm going back to Neptune now I think Christine Northrup was uh, Chiron <laughs> I see her as a, a walking living breathing Chiron and of course Chiron has a lot to do with that 51 year age and that change of life but uh, Elizabeth Kubler Ross got together and uh, David Kessler carried on her work after she passed He's got these uh, stages. You start with denial, moves into anger, goes into depression. Then you start bargaining. Then you come in finally to acceptance. Uh, you know, whether it's the book or the, you know, or the YouTube uh, or this website, he's, you know, he's explaining the stages of denial a little bit here. You may want to go into more of this finally coming to acceptance and there are just so many people dealing with loss and whether it is a eighth house or a 12th house or a pluto or even a jupiter jupiter transits can also remove limiting factors and people from our lives but there can also be grief associated with any loss. And we are taught to suppress our grief. Go off to your room if you want to cry. Just separate or isolate. So it's very helpful, right? You know, I mean, I have shared these stages of grief with many, many, many clients. It's really great to have, you know, um, access to these different stages and help people move through them. Yeah. And uh, beyond that, then what do I, what else do I have here? <laughs> Brene Brown. Come on. I'm sure you've probably heard of her, but I love her. She is amazing. This is a time where we are maybe grooming future leaders Okay, and you know, Brene has just got, you know, so much to offer on being brave, on, you know, uh, understanding, okay, ourselves, understanding our process, understanding society, how to move through energy, how to deal with uh, betrayal in relationship yeah, and move on and not not run and hide, but she's just a wealth, okay, of study, of information, of experience, counseling, whatever. She's just got it all freaking going on. Yeah. And honey, could you uh, go over there? I've got the sacred rebel deck right over there. So th these are, um, I have these links that I wanted to share with you. Uh, and beyond that, of course, uh, on the page that I gave and will be posted is David Data. David Data is a little, you know, he's been around a long time. Some of his stuff is, you know, a little dated, but he's still going. Um, he taught Brian Reeves. He taught John Wineland. You know, they, it's kind of coming down and morphing and evolving and changing this whole work, you know, with relationships and sexuality. Um, and the jewel in the lotus uh, is a tr tremendous book on tantra that is means and ways of working with the, our sexual energy, our Pluto energy, in a very healthy way. I know that tantra has gotten very popular. It's also gotten very twisted. <laughs> and, um, you know, very kind of bent out of shape in so many different ways to the origins. And so the jewel in the Lotus is it's from, you know, I think it was from the 60s or 70s, maybe the 80s at the 
latest, but it's one of the original works. If you're not familiar with it, I think it's really awesome. And then, of course, I want to bring forward what? I mean, the sacred rebel oracle. I mean, she is absolutely fantastic, right? Alana Fairchild. And when you just want to, you know, I mean, whether you're tossing the I Ching or, you know, doing the Tarot, I like the Thoth deck by Aleister Crowley. I suggest that is a very powerful Tarot card. This is just an oracle where, you know, you draw a card, you ask a question, she leads you through. It's just like very, yeah, there's a lot of decks of cards out there. I just wanted to suggest my favorite, <laughs> you know, because I'm having fun. And uh, definitely uh, uh, what I want to share I, is we know, at least I feel, that uh, disease, right, health and wellness uh, in our physical body is pretty much the final stage, okay, that it starts out on the spiritual soul level, and then it comes down into the mental body, and then it comes down into the emotional body. And by the time you get psoriasis or, you know, you get, you know, kidney stones or, you know, you get prostate cancer or whatever, you know, what, by the time you've got one of these, you know, that's dealing with the results, right? And so I also want to share with you then um, this last but not least, um, Louise Hay uh, came out with Heal Your Body. I think that uh, she was really great. And I downloaded this guy on Kindle, Jacques Martel. And he's got the complete dictionary of ailments and diseases. Uh, we are also giving you the link to this book that you can get on Amazon, like I said, you can just get it on Kindle and you can look up anything that's going on in your physical body and it's just far more uh, how can i say broad than heal your body like this guy takes it and gives you pages of information about the emotional and psychological dynamics that are behind and involved with any problem that you are having in your physical body. So it's, you know, any ailments that you've got, this guy is absolutely off the charts. He's fantastic. And so these are some of the things that I wanted to share with you today. And, you know, uh, that's, that's I mean, I can answer some questions, how these relate to the chart or anything that I said at the beginning of the webinar uh, that, you know, uh, may, you know, may have triggered anything. I suggest to stop recording. You have it on pause at the moment. I think that was a while ago. So Wendy's saying, aha, I'm looking at the chat box now. If there are any uh, questions that anybody has, wonderful. And if not, I'm good with that too. <laughs> I mean, maybe some of you might want to share if you know all about this and this is just old stuff or, or if this is, you know, something new or you got some new, uh, you know, uh, something out of our time together today, that would be great. Great. Yes, I mean, I just really want to say that astrology is, I mean, I love it. I, yeah, I don't know if I could live without it. I incarnated to, you know, to do it and be it and express it and teach it and share it. And I mean, it is my passion. And 
All I can say is like all these other means, it, it's, it's like knowing astrology, knowing your transits, knowing your chart is not enough to get you through the evolutionary process of waking up. I probably want to close here with the, you know, with the, with the spiritual stage. Okay, if we move through the consensus, we move through the individuated and we move into that spiritual stage, it really does have to do with stilling the egoic mind. That our thinking is a tool of the ego and our ego lives in separation. And to really move and to open that pineal gland, to really open our crown chakra, we need to discipline our mind and discipline our thinking. And so this ability to move into the observer, to move into the witness, this is really fostered naturally, okay, through pranayama, through breath work. There are amazing numbers. I have some pranayama breath work uh, on my website. It's for free. You can download it. I just really work with the breath. Okay. And of course, the exercise and the breath and the running that I talked about. There's also sound and music, right? And, you know, and there's, you know, there's now ways of changing your brain waves. Okay, with the holotropic, you know, uh, sound technology, there are there's many technologies out that are helpful to coming into a state of recognition that in Lakesh Alakin, I am another you, that we move into a state of oneness, bliss, unity, nirvana, samadhi. And that's it, baby. Okay. Thank you, Carol. All right, Monica. Thank you all for being here today. I wish you the very best. And I will stop this recording on my side. Yeah. Perfect. Ciao, ciao. Uh, I hope you check out those sites and do some seven minute workouts and some Kundalini yoga and do some uh, relationship courses and your life just becomes fantastic. <laughs> Namaste. Aloha. So much love. Oh, yeah.